My name is David Huynh and I'm a director and principal here at Qmetrix. For this video demonstration, we're going to cover off on multi-dimensional driver-based planning. What is a dimension? It can be things like products, customers, a region or location, or even a particular time period. Multi-dimensional planning is commonly used for driver-based modelling where you are planning at a more granular level as opposed to just the profit and cost center and GL account. Workday Adaptive Planning supports this type of planning through what is referred to as a cube sheet, which is effectively a large uh, pivot table in Excel speak, allowing you to choose the dimensions to display, nest and filter by for planning. So right now we're looking at the product revenue cube sheet. So let me introduce you to some of the, the key elements on this sheet. As always with the Workday Adaptive Planning templates on the top right uh, will be the version drop down. So right now I've got the version Working Budget V2 selected so I know which plan I'm entering my data into and reviewing. Across the top section of this particular sheet are effectively my dimensions. So I've got my profit center and of course my customer and product dimensions that we saw a little bit earlier. Across the left hand side we've got our uh, accounts or metrics and of course across the top here we've got our time period that we're entering our data into. Now as you can see on this particular sheet quite a lot of the cells are locked. In fact the only cell I can key data into is really uh, my units and the discount percentage I can provide. A lot of the other cells uh, are locked for data entry because a lot of these numbers are actually coming from a separate uh, assumption sheet uh, and that's because for this particular organization uh, the, the cost to sort of manufacture this product uh, is irrespective of uh, the customer um, that I, I'm selling to. So really the only uh, controls that I have on this particular template is really the uh, units and, uh, and discount percentage. So to give you a bit of an idea on those uh, other sheets or assumption sheets sitting behind this, let's have a go at adjusting uh, the price. So let's say, um, you know, we can see here that from July onwards it's $100. Um, let's actually flip that back down to, to $96 as an example. I'm going to navigate through to my assumption sheet and jump over to my sales drivers. Now this sheet here is also a cube sheet. Um, so I've got my products listed down on the left hand side nested with my accounts as you can see here. Again because I've navigated through to here from my previous sheet it knows I'm looking at this particular profit center. So it was product A1 we wanted to adjust and we actually wanted to adjust the pricing um, from July onwards. It really shouldn't be $100 similar to my other products. It should be maintained throughout the year. So let's adjust that back to $96 and we'll just use one of my shortcuts here to copy that forward to the end. And let's hit save to lock that in. Now let's navigate back to my product revenue sheet. And as you can see here, uh, it's now $96 from July onwards. As I said before, the cube sheet is a little bit like a, a pivot table in Excel. So let's arrange some of the, the information that we can see on the screen to make my inputs and my analysis a little bit easier. So let's say I want to focus on uh, customer one, but I want to swap my uh, products with one of these particular accounts. The one that I can adjust is going to be units. So let's just swap the product dimension with my units. Now 
Now by pivoting my, my units and products around, you can see now that the accounts are uh, at the top um, and my products are now listed down on the left hand side for customer A1, uh, or sorry, customer one. Now let's also filter my products by the category of small. And this will further reduce the subset on my screen. So in terms of entering data, obviously these are, you know, I've got free reign. Uh, these are, are white cells, so I can key um, some numbers straight into these. But just to highlight and show you some of the shortcut options that are available uh, to me, I can key numbers in at the uh, total level for all these products and spread those numbers down. Let me show you what that looks like. So I can push that back in proportion to what's there. And or I could push things up things back evenly. So let's let's just do this one as five thousand. Push that back evenly. So that gives you a bit of a feel for how you can do some really quick uh, top down spreading of numbers. Now I've I've done this obviously for, for two months. Let's make this adjustment uh, at a whole scale level. So let's say it's going to be 25,000 for FY21 in terms of units sold. And we'll push that number back. So very quickly and easily, I've just made um, a top-down change for customer one for these particular products, which are filtered by the category of small. So I'll hit save and lock that in. Now, to round this out, let's actually have a look at our P&L sheet to see how these numbers now have flown through and um, connected to our P&L. So I'm just going to drill down on one of my product revenue GL account lines. Uh, let's have a look at December. I think I made some, some pretty big adjustments towards the back end of the year. If I hit explore cell and I navigate through to my product revenue sales cube, let's explore that number. And as you can see here, uh, the bulk of our adjustments has been in customer one. And if I wanted to drill down a little bit further, I can see that uh, yeah we did a, quite a few changes or adjustments against these particular uh, product categories of A1 and A4 which were obviously in the small uh, category. So that's it for this uh, brief demonstration. We really just wanted to cover off on the power of Workday Adaptive Planning and how easy it can be to do multi-dimensional uh, planning. As always if you have any questions please feel free to reach out. Bye for now.